Hey Daniel, what's up? I learned the most interesting thing in my boy Paul's class today. It was the concept that atmospheric circulation is the determinant for climate manipulation because it distributes heat globally as well as controls ocean currents through wind motion. How does it work? Let me tell you. As we know, the sun warms the earth, but it does so unequally because of the angle of earth's positioning. The smaller the angle of incidence, the larger the area that light is spread out over. As a result, the poles are a lot colder than the tropics where the sun is most perpendicular to the earth. In turn, the contrast in the temperature creates air with different densities. This is important because the density difference in air drives atmospheric circulation. Hot air rises due to its lower density as opposed to that of cold air which descends. The tropics receive more sunlight, therefore the air is warmer and it rises and is displaced towards the poles by the air that is rising below it. As this air travels towards the poles, it cools, and upon reaching the poles, it descends and becomes displaced towards the tropics. That's really interesting, Nate, but that would suggest that there is a single circulation cell for each hemisphere, when in actuality there are three. Here, let me explain. Your model suggests that there are two zones of high atmospheric pressure, one at the North Pole and one at the South Pole. There's also a zone of low atmospheric pressure that's running along the equator. These differences in pressure are observed as a result of air, with different densities due in part to temperature disparities. When air is cold, it becomes more dense than that of the air around it. The cold air sinks to the earth and creates an area of high atmospheric pressure, which is due to the air molecules pushing down on the earth. The low atmospheric pressure zones work similarly, where warm air, which is less dense, rises and creates an area of low atmospheric pressure. The reason there are three different atmospheric cells in each hemisphere is due to these pressure differences running along the Earth. Instead of two high pressure zones at the poles and one low pressure zone running along the equator, we also have two high pressure zones within the subtropics and two low pressure zones running along the subpolar region. Therefore, we actually have three cells within each hemisphere, the polar cell, the feral cell, and the Hadley cell. These cells, in conjunction with the Coriolis effect, which is caused by the rotation of the Earth, direct wind movement, which in turn controls heat and water distributions globally. The only thing I'm not so sure about, however, is if you follow the movement of the feral cell, the colder air in the subpolar region actually rises while the air that is warmer in the feral cell descends near the subtropic region, which is completely counterintuitive. Hmm. I guess I'm going to have to go ask Professor Barber 